So there's one or a couple more, I guess. But uh, anyway, well, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> uh, just a reminder that uh, starting uh, for July and August, we're just going to be holding the mixer meetings. And then we'll return to the uh, twice a month uh, schedule of come September. So tonight, uh, Ken's going to talk a little bit about his uh, his onion and uh, how he put it all together and that kind of thing. And then I think next uh, next month he's going to talk a little bit about um, the the testing details and et cetera. So, and then after Ken's done, we can uh, we'll just talk a little bit about uh, our our schedule as. Uh, as how we've got the presentation schedule organized for now. Uh, I'll probably do a posting on the website of the schedule shortly, once I remember how to do it. And uh, and then after that, we'll, uh, we, we can do our, uh, our round table. So uh, Ken, if you wanted to uh, get going, uh, that'd be great. All righty, <clears throat> so let me share here. Uh, where is share, share. Uh, entire screen, this one, and share. Okay, where it is. All right, you guys see uh, my screen? Yep. Yeah, okay. So uh, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe two or three years ago. Um, I wanted to build a, a random uh, NFED ant antenna, but at that time, uh, Dizek, uh, Kissing Parts was very ill, and uh, he had temporarily shut it down. Uh, he wasn't in any shape to fill or, or send anything out. So I uh, I think I posted on the Sarks group that I was looking for a, a big toroid, and uh, I forget who um, was able to send it to me. I think uh, it was Drew. Huh? I think it came from Drew or Howard, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember. I think they gave it to me and I mailed it to you, but re regardless, anyway, it was one yeah. of those two guys. Well, well, whoever it was, uh, I still owe them a favor. <laughs> so basically, um, uh, I'm looking for something uh, 40 to 10. Um, so the toroid uh, I was able to get is the T200-2. Uh, uh, the two uh, number two mix uh, two inch diameter toroid, and in the photo I've got my wire on the left, the toroid in the middle, and uh, plumber's tape or Teflon tape. And uh, the Teflon, the reason for the Teflon tape is to wrap it around the toroid to stop any sharp edges from scratching through the enamel on the uh, wire. Uh, some people claim they put it on so it doesn't, the wire doesn't arc over to the toroid. So next step was, there's a toroid all wrapped with uh, Teflon tape. Uh, I think I got like three or four layers on there. And then there it is, wound. Now the the largest gauge I had was 20. I wanted to use at least 18 or 16. Uh, the only largest gauge I had was number 14. So I wrapped it with number 14. So it's uh, pretty heavy duty. Um, it took some time to wind it because the, uh, the wire is pretty stiff. But uh, I was uh, able to manage to get it on there. Next step was to put it into a container. So this container I already had uh, in the shack, so I decided to use it. So basically on the uh, uh, left side is the uh, the RF in. Uh, on the uh, bottom side there, that's where the uh, antenna element goes to. And then the one on the top side is a optional ground counterpoise. And then the one at the far left is just for, uh, um, mostly for uh, strain relief. So basically your wire will uh, attach to that hook and uh, prevent it being pulled around. 
And uh, the next step was I uh, I had purchased a, a um, what do you call it? Nano VNA. And uh, after watching a couple of videos, um, I was able to do uh, uh, SWR scan on it uh, within about 15 minutes. How to calibrate it, how to set it up, and uh, some of the results I have. So, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. So, SWR. So, I scanned uh, 6.5 megs, 7.5 megs. So, I'm getting 1 to 2.5 to 1 to 2.1, uh, 13.5 to 14.5. I don't know. 1, one to 1. Something like that. Uh, 20 meters. 20 meters. Yeah, that's right. 15 meters. Uh, 1.4. And then 10 meters is about 1.8, 1.9. And I also did a uh, impedance uh, scan on it. So again, 40 meters. It's about 35 uh, ohms. Uh, 20 meters, it's about 51, close enough. Uh, 15 meters is somewhere in the uh, 39 range. And 10 meters is about 26 or so. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, so the next step is... Um, I have to decide how long of an element I want to use. And when they say random length, it's not actually random length. It's a predetermined length. Um, you don't want your element uh, to resonate on uh, quarter waves lengths. So whatever your bands you want to run it on, um, it can't resonate on those bands. So I've decided to uh, um, use 58 feet, which is a non-resonant length. And that should fit in my backyard uh, fairly easy. Um, I'm going camping in a few weeks. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to make a 71-foot uh, element. And... Uh, Take a camping and check it out and see how it works. So when that's all said and done, I'll come back in one of the meetings and uh, I'll report how well it went. And that is it. Okay, thanks, Ken. That's a you did a nice, really neat job there. Uh, nicely done. Um, Thank you. How, you know, when you're talking about the, all the different uh, wire sizes that you were contemplating and we're going to use there, how much current were you expecting to go through there? If I, if I had 18, I wasn't really too worried about it. But I didn't have 18. So yeah, well, there's I a big difference between 18 and 14. That's kind of why I'm questioning a little bit. But yeah. No, I just used 14 because that's what I had. Okay. I didn't uh, deliberately go out and buy it. So you had... Number 14 enameled cable just lying around your shack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Actually, I think I got it from uh, my brother-in-law. He does. He's an electrician. Somehow he ended up with this, and I, I used it. Yeah, very good. And uh, it's free. It, well, yeah, free, then we'll use it for sure. Um, uh, Michael, you got a question? Can can why why the three conduct why the three turns like the three three sets of wires is that because of current carrying capacity? It's like why uh, three conductors. When you... Yeah, it's trifilers. So the first winding is the input, and then the total three windings is the output. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah it's fifty uh, fifty to four fifty. I have a, I have a forty meter QCX and. Uh, I'm contemplating taking a camping with something, and I haven't really figured out what that something is going to be. So maybe something like this would work. Yeah. Is it nine nine turns? 
nine turns, which is 49 to one impedance ratio. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Don't build anything that big. Mm -hmm. If you're going to take a camping, build something much smaller. So, yeah, so, uh, um, the, the ratio isn't 49 to one in this particular case, it's nine to one, nine to one for, yeah. an, for a random, random wire. This is not an end fed half wave. This is an end fed random wire. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ken, uh, when you did your impedance testing and your SWR testing, that kind of thing, did you not have a, you, what did you have hooked up to the, for the antenna then? Uh, I put a 450 carbon resistor load on it. Oh, okay. Cheater. Yeah. So, uh, when I actually get to set it up, when I go camping, I'll, I'll take some real measurements on the, on the element. Yeah. The real world stuff. Yeah. Anybody else have any uh, questions for for uh, Ken? Okay. Uh, thanks for that, Ken. Look, look forward to seeing uh, what uh, what your results are. Oh, yeah. And so you you're taking that camping up to the usual spot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we weren't going to go up to uh, Earl Road this year because I was supposed to go to FDIM. And then that FDIM got canceled for me. So we're going camping instead. But uh, next year we're going up to, um, what's it called? Arrowhead Provincial Park, north of Huntsville. So you've already canceled FDIM for next year? What's that? You've already canceled FDIM for next year? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I could be retired by next year. <laughs> I can go anywhere, anytime I want. <laughs> Eric, you got a comment? <clears throat> yeah, Ken, um, with your Nano VNA, did you get any screen captures of uh, what you were doing uh, with it? Curious, uh, you know, what you learned. Uh, with the... Just using the nano VNA, I, I, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael. I don't know if he can do screen captures, but if he use uh, the uh, nano VNA saver program, then you can. Okay. Was I that think, just a, I think that a, like a, 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 an output from the nano VNA directly, or did you make that file, that, that, that text think, file that you showed? No, Was no, that, I did that by hand. Oh, that was generated by you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That yeah, with the with the with the Nano VNA saver, uh, you can uh, you can create a JPEG or a PNG or whatever and save it that way, and then just print it out or whatever you want. Yeah. I forget whether you can. I don't know whether you can do a screen capture directly. What I would do is just photograph the screen. Yeah. Easy way. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got in. I, I've only played with it maybe half an hour. And I did all those yeah. uh, steroid checks and impedances. Okay. Yeah, it'd be yep. interesting just to uh, see what you learned with the uh, nano VNA and measuring. Uh, yeah, you know, there's tons of stuff you could do with it. Yeah. I joined the user group, and holy cow, some of the stuff these guys are doing. Right. In the end, though, it's pretty straightforward uh, to measure the. Uh... Oh, yeah. Very easy. Um, well, I wanted to check the SWR on the Anun. So um, Ellen Wolke, W2AEW, he's got a quick scar, uh, start video on it. Mm. So basically within three minutes, it's set up and ready to go and you can do your SWR scan. Oh, okay. And uh, there's another guy I'm following. What's his name? Uh, he's called the Smoking Ape. He did one too. And it's very, very easy. Okay. And I was very careful about where I purchased it from. Um, Newlick is the only one that's authorized to sell in North America. So I bought it from them. So whether I bought it in Canada, in Canadian dollars, or I bought it in U.S. with exchange, it was still the same price. 
Okay, I see it here. Introduction to VNAs and Nano VNA by uh, W2AEW, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you can look at the uh, smoke, the smoking ape. I think he, he calls himself. Right. Yeah. Heard of smoking, that? Smoking. Smoking ape. Without smoking. the G. Yeah. Oh, smoking. And what's his channel all about? Um, he explains a lot of stuff. He does a lot of uh, um, product review. Okay. Um, he doesn't get paid for it, but they send it to him to review. Okay. Hey, Ken, can you stop sharing as well? I've seen him come to Dayton like the last two times. Yeah. Sorry, what was that, Sherry? Uh, I've seen that uh, guy come to Dayton actually uh, last two times. Who, the smoking ape? Yeah. Oh, okay. Anybody else have a comment for Ken or anybody? Yeah, Ken, could you stop sharing your screen? Thanks. Oh, I thought I did. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Okay. Okay, thanks, Ken. Um, so next on my list is a bit of our presentation. Dave, did you want to talk about the uh, the guest presenters at all? Yeah, if you want, sure. Okay, well, we do have some, uh, we've kind of filled in some holes uh, lately of uh, for some presentations and thanks to Dave for his uh, work at uh, Four Days in May. Uh, we've got some guest speakers, so uh, Dave, if you wanted to uh, just talk a little bit about what's up and coming, I don't know if you got the paperwork in front of you and the dates, but if you need the dates, just let me know and I'll I'll tell, let you remind you what we're scheduled for. And then uh, we got uh, a couple of others that are in there. So if you want to chat away about it, Dave, it's all yours. Now I've got it uh, programmed in my calendar. Okay. So on September fourth, we've got Bowden. I won't try to pronounce his name. But I met him at the uh, the uh, Cambridge Hamfest, the Waterloo, you know, Kitchener Waterloo Cambridge Hamfest, and uh, he had a booth there, and he was um, promoting um, a mesh tastic, and uh, he wants to create a mesh tastic uh, network among the amateur radio community. So I, I spoke to him uh, about that, say we'd like to hear about that and hear about what he's envisioning about Meshtastic. So he's going to be talking on September 4th. Uh, then on September 18th, we've, we've got a really, really good market calendar. Simon, market calendar for, for, for this one. You're going to like it. We've, oh no, uh, yeah, Sean, there's there's two actually presentations you like, Simon, because they're both astronomy related. So this one is by uh, Sean Atkins. We met him at uh, uh, Dayton. We've been hanging around with him every time we go to Dayton. And Sean is a project um, manager for a lot of the large radio telescope projects, including the one in Hawaii the one in uh, Chile. He just finished uh, working on the one in Chile. And the, the man is a walk-in encyclopedia around uh, just electronics and everything scientific. He is one of the most knowledgeable uh, people I've met. So he's coming out. He's just going to talk about uh, himself and the projects and, you know, some interesting uh, challenges uh, he found with those telescopes. So that's on September 18th. So that's one um, you don't want to miss. He's a really interesting guy. Then on the 16th, we have David Berberstein. And uh, David's based out of, uh, uh, by the way, Sean is based out of um, Hawaii. So he's uh, going to be doing the presentation remotely. And Bowden's based, I, I think he's in the Kitchener area. Uh, David uh, uh, Berverstein, he's in the uh, Toronto area. I don't know if you know him. Um, he's the authority on pico ballooning. 
So right now, last time I spoke to him, he said he's put up Pico balloons that circumnavigated the globe, I think over 20 times. So this is a small Pico balloon. It's gone around the world over 20 times without coming down. So he's coming out and he's going to talk about Pico ballooning. That's on October 16th. Uh, that's uh, going to be a very interesting talk. That's the fellow who uh, hangs out with Hans, right? That's right. Hans yeah. Hans actually wrote the software that he runs in his Pico balloon because he uses Whisper to uh, track where he is. He encodes special numbers in Whisper and uh, he's able to get like the balloon voltage and Latin longitude and altitude and everything from that. Very, very interesting. So in November, that was October, right? 16th? Yep. Uh, yes. So in October 20th. No, November. The, sorry, no, uh, yeah, November 20th. So Simon, Mark, this one. Uh, uh, you may know You may know a lot about this subject, but we have Glenn Iverson. He's an old colleague of mine that I used to fly rockets with many, 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 many uh, years ago. And uh, he's no longer in uh, high power rocketry. He's into astrophotography. So some of the photos he shared with me are just spectacular. I don't know how he's able to go and capture a galaxy with just a telescope. And so he's obviously using special techniques to resolve uh, uh, the galaxies, but he's going to come out and talk about that. I think that's going to be a really, really uh, fascinating uh, conversation. So that's November 20th. And uh, Peter, I th there's there's nothing in November, right? No, that, I think that's it. That's the only thing we have in November. There are some open dates. Uh, um, all of December is open. December 4th and 18th is open. Uh, November 6th is open. Um, that's pretty much it. Those so three, four, it looks like about four or five dates we, we, we have open. Uh, so all of you guys, there's lots of room for any of the, uh, anything you might be working on that you want to talk about, present. So like I said, I'll, uh, oh, while we're talking about what is scheduled here, we do have Charlie scheduled in on the October 2nd mixer for, uh, uh for <clears throat> where is it here grounding basics uh considerations basic grounding considerations and of course uh hopefully uh uh ken will come back from his camping trip with full of uh, data for us on uh, august 7th i think it is yeah august 7th so we were looking pretty empty for a while but we're looking pretty good now so that's great does anybody have any uh, questions or comments uh, about the schedule presentations? I'm going to jump in here. I have I have a comment. There's a Road and Schwartz uh, seminar on July the July the 11th, I think it is, on oscilloscopes that you can register to. If anybody's interested, they have some pretty good uh, uh, webinars, Michael. I wa I watched one last week on uh, noise me uh, make making noise measurements using the Y methodology so it's sometimes yeah. uh, if you haven't done so far you should just take a look and and just see what they've got up and coming you can register for them and if you don't make it out for the live webinar uh you're you're set up to go that you can uh access the uh presentation on demand and watch at your own uh, at your own leisure but uh, I yeah this one, is, this one is july the uh july the 11th at one one o'clock in the afternoon because it's easy, it's 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 uh, someplace in yeah one o'clock in the afternoon EDT so it's whatever think, time it is in California but yeah. anyway like you say you can go back and do it just register yeah that's right and I think once you register for one I think you can access all the ones that they have stored online I think that's right yeah yeah, yeah that's one of the it's pretty good any other uh, comments okay um i think that's pretty much it there oh ken no i just wanted to uh in regards i had posted that i was going to have the final price for the dcr at mm. the end of the weekend and uh, uh i haven't finalized the final number um 
Kevin is writing the manual for it. It's always scrambling to get all the parts together, and I'm going to be sending him the kit. And then when he gets around to it, he uh, he's going to write the man uh, manual for it. Uh, the kit's going to be around the twenty dollar uh, price range, twenty twenty two bucks. Um, the only thing it's not included in there is the SMD resistors, SMD caps, um, the LED for the power, and uh, two dip sockets for the ICs. Um, now, th there was a comment uh, made at the last meeting that uh, you know some people have those pieces in their junk box, which is good. And then there were some people who did not have those parts in their junk box. Uh, there's nothing to say that you you can use through hole parts mm -hmm. for the caps and the resistors. Um, yeah, there's, lots, there's lots of room on on the pads, and uh, just solder them on. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be easier for people to get through hole parts, anyways. But just to make everybody aware, the through through hole stuff is uh, quickly disappearing and everything's switching over to SMD. Even some of the resistors, you can't get them anymore. Some of the values. Ken, you, you, Ken, you were going to do uh, a bill of materials for um, from DigiKey, is that right? To get that right? Yeah. Yeah, I have a list there. Um, when I make the final posting with the final price, I'll provide that uh, DigiKey list. And what you do is you've got, if you have an account, you log in, uh, click on the URL, it'll load up a list, and then just add it to an empty cart. Yeah. Thanks. So this is going to be, this will be the first uh, manual after Frank, Kevin. No pressure. What are you going to do to make it look unique? <laughs> well, I... I did the last manual for the oh, last build yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. You oh, did. Well, I so, I, so I have that template. So if everybody was okay with that, then I'll just try to maintain the same standard. How's that? <laughs> Excellent. If I if I can do the same standard, I'll be happy. If it's better, okay then, but don't expect too much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, has anybody else got anything they want to uh, bring up? Okay, well, I guess with that we can go uh, up. Uh, Eric? Bring up as far as presentations or any other business? Or any other business. Any other business. Uh, a couple things. Uh, one is, um, well, I think we were tentatively talking about uh, having something up uh, at our place here in lieu of field day, perhaps in August. Am I dreaming or were we kind of suggesting there might be uh, an opportunity for that? Well, I know Just... we talked about something like a four days at Eric's cottage in November. Yeah. 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 But uh, okay. other than that, I'm not sure. I don't remember anything about August. I don't think but that doesn't mean there's something won't work in August. What, does anybody else remember? <clears throat> no. Yeah. No. But I'm up for it. Yeah. If, uh, you know, we wanted to do a... Uh, I was actually thinking of maybe doing something for the uh, Canada Day contest this past weekend that uh, Rack was holding, but uh, just too little too late. So, and it's a busy weekend for everybody, right? So, but, you know, maybe the last weekend in August, maybe not the last full weekend, because that's Labor Day weekend. That's probably not a good weekend, or maybe it is. I don't know, so but no no <laughs> it's not yeah okay so maybe the weekend prior so, so that's what we, we did that one year right where we uh got together in august so yeah a couple years back so anyway all right but uh yeah and then uh, november i'll uh, i'll make a posting uh about that uh, uh second third weekend in november cottage so okay Actually, speaking about getting together and stuff like that. Oh, no, no, never mind. I'll bring it up later. Um, okay. Any other comments? Good to see Simon uh, today. Yeah. 
So I, you know, usually they, you're they, on they dine more often. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually you're on Tuesdays, and I am always busy on Tuesdays. Oh, okay. Okay. Who's usually on Tuesdays? Oh, don't, isn't your meeting sometimes on Tuesdays, or am no. I meet, meet, mixing it up with somebody else? Yeah, no, it's always have, Wednesday. Always Wednesday, Simon. Okay. There goes that excuse. Now, what are you going to say? Well, I do have meetings on Wednesdays too. <laughs> uh, almost every day, I have conflicts. Oh wow. Okay. Well, uh, I guess we got uh, some time here for uh, a, a roundtable. Um, the usual mixer roundtable. I um, guess we'll start with myself. Uh, of late, I've been, uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been, uh, I took an interest in uh, phase lock loops. So I've been reading up on that as much as I can and decided, well, now the time is to, is to put knowledge to a circuit board. So, of course, I decided to, so I started to design a circuit board and whatnot, and then I decided to learn a little bit more hierarchical sheets and all this other stuff that goes in KeyCAD, which now, turned into uh, another, I don't want to say a rabbit hole because it wasn't quite that deep, but it uh, kind of delayed between putting the circuit in KeyCAD and then uh, producing the Gerber so I could mill it. Anyway, that's what I'm working on, sort of two, part, two parts to it. One is the basics, and then the second part will be uh, an application uh, for it. And I think that's pretty much what's been on, on my bench. Uh, Al, you're up next on my screen. What's, uh, what's new on your bench these days? Oh, not too, too much. Uh, I, I got to I got to finish a couple of projects before I start another one. So, uh, as usual, started another one. I, uh, you know, in the uh, experimental methods uh, book in the archives, there's a an article in the uh, archives of that of a uh, an RF power uh, meter from uh, Wes Hayward. I don't know if anybody has ever seen that particular article. But, uh, I built one. Yeah, so I decided, okay, let's build this. It goes from you know, nanowatts uh, right up to 100 watts, so that, that's kind of interesting. Uh, so slowly, uh, well, I start with the hardware, so I've got the box already done, so uh, oh. so, so that'll be nice. There's nothing inside yet. <laughs> One interesting thing is it's built around a logarithm uh, uh, amplifier from um, oh, uh, analog devices in 8307, I think it is. AD8307, yep, my favorite yeah. chip. Yeah, and it's interesting. It's um, I found that buying a pre-assembled board on Amazon or no, it was actually AliExpress was the same cost as buying the chip alone. So I was able to actually buy the whole front end of this thing is already done for fifteen dollars. Can't beat that. So all I have to do is uh, build the um, uh, uh, the meter driver uh, on a PC board and put it all together. And uh, so the parts, are, a few more parts are still coming in, but uh, maybe by next month I'll have this thing put together. And uh, if it doesn't let the magic smoke out, I'll uh, uh, I'll give it a try. Um, not much else there. Um, actually, one note for Simon. Actually, uh, you know our, our flat friend uh, Glenn down at um, A One Surplus. He has one heck of a lot of uh, large, vintage, uh, never used uh, vacuum tubes. He apparently got 10,000 pieces. <laughs> uh, bought a guy out who had everything. So if you're looking for old vacuum tubes of that vintage, uh, well, there you go. Uh, they're untested, of course. New, untested, that probably means gassy. I'm not sure. But anyhow, uh, just something for, uh, for reference. Apart from that, uh, it's summertime. I'm not doing too much ham radio. I think most of my ham radio right now is uh, 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 trying to bone up my uh, CW as I drive into work every day and uh, just listening to the uh, the code practice. So uh, that's pretty much all I'm up to right now. Thank you, right. That's great, uh, Al. Yeah, the, that little trip down the memory lane, like Dave made a little notice there, the 8307 we used in our SNA project. And uh, and many many actually before I even moved to Kingston, way before I got interested in that 8307 chip and did a lot of experimentation with it, that pages and pages of data on it. I although I didn't go to to uh, use I didn't use the meter like you did. I took the output and I went to, and I scrapped the op amp and I took I fed the output of the chip directly into uh, an Arduino, mm -hmm. and then I just read the uh, the 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 
the, the power levels off of the uh, screen. I'll be interested to see your results for sure, because I think I got pretty much linear down to about, oh, I want to say about minus 70-ish, 70 71, I think, dBm. And on the positive side, I think I got up to, I want to say about plus 10 dB. I, it's been so long, I can't remember, 10 dBm, something like that. But uh, and, I, and with a little bit of magic, it probably could have programmed in a, a second linear range because it kind of came down like this and then it healed a little bit and then leveled a little bit more. So you could get a little bit low, but I didn't bother with that yeah. uh, stuff. But I think you'll enjoy working with that chip. It might mean a, a rabbit hole I go down to right now. The device has an analog meter for quick checks and then a, um, uh, an output for a digital multimeter. Where yeah. You can actually get a more precise value. Mm -hmm. uh, fr frankly, I'm not smart enough to do the Arduino yet. So, well, uh, if you want the next code, generation. <laughs> if you want some code for the Arduino, I can dig it up. This might not be the only one I build. Modify it. Anyway, that's great. Okay, well, thanks, uh, Al. That's that's great. Uh, uh, Dave. Oh, sorry. Simon, you got something to comment? I just want to add uh, for valves, I just need to. Uh, Go down in my basement and dig through boxes and boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Uh, Dave, what's on your bench these days? Remnants of rockets? Nope. Rocket. I've been. I started working on my uh, Z80 computer. Oh yeah. I, uh, I got the chipset from uh, my son Christmas, so I've got the entire chipset to build a. A retro Z80 computer, uh, you know, with the hand toggle bits and stuff. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just post a video here of the the actual startup of it. I'll post it in the comments for those interested. You could uh, click on that link and you'll see the actual CPU on a breadboard. It's not doing much. All it's doing is executing no ops and it's just running at two hertz and I'm just checking to make sure it's fetching and executing cycles uh, properly, but that's uh, that's where I'm at. Okay, Dave, well, it's too bad Frank was, you know, because Frank, I remember, I don't remember all the details, but I remember him telling me many, many years ago, he built a computer and, and when he was in Brandon down in his basement, he had it hanging on the wall or at least bits and pieces of it. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So when are you going to bump up the uh, from two hertz up to something uh, in the megahertz range? Oh, it's already running at 10 megahertz. It's just changing the clock. Okay. Oh, it can run at 10 megahertz. I think the maximum the chip can do is 10 megahertz. I've had it running at 1.8 megahertz. I've had it running at 10 megahertz. It's There's, there's no limitation. It's just swapping out a chip. Okay. Cool. Okay, thanks uh, for that, Dave. Uh, Eric, anything on your bench? <clears throat> A test, maybe? <laughs> That's funny. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, no, no test on my bench, unfortunately. Uh, test, Lots of test leads. I mean, this is probably the state of most of my, you know, work areas, unfortunately. Uh, <coughs> Before I can actually do anything, I need to do some serious cleaning up. And uh, unfortunately, since our house is upside down with all of the furniture removed on two levels of the house for about three weeks now, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of room to uh, maneuver in here. So the basement is rather clogged. Anyway, uh, yeah, so not uh, not a whole lot uh, going on in uh, in my corner, unfortunately, from a. Uh, from a uh, radio point of view so other than uh, i did pick up some uh, interesting little booklets that i've started to read which some of you might be familiar with the uh Extel set society crystal set maybe that name sounds familiar to some of you but uh, it was a uh, newsletter that came out uh, starting in, I don't know, 1991 or so and uh, continued on for, uh, I think, till 2017. So they had a long run, um, you know, 28 years or 
whatever that, no, longer than that, eh, whatever, something like that. Anyway, so it was a monthly newsletter or bi-monthly newsletter um, and uh, all about uh, Crystal Radio. So lots of fundamentals in there that I'm starting to uh, dig through and look through and uh, thinking of projects. So um, anyway, I, I forget, I was listening to a podcast, they, somebody brought up this uh, Crystal Set Society, which uh, I had never heard of. Uh, so um, quite an interesting little, uh, little uh, part of history now, but uh, nice to see that they're what readily available in reprints. So, well, then you're going to have to start uh, growing your own crystals. Then uh, Ken's got a question for you or a comment. Who's got yeah. some germanium diodes for me? <laughs> I think they have a store in California for uh, crystal radio parts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the stuff that was mentioned in here. This was published, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, maybe about 2018 2019 or so a lot of those sources have actually become defunct uh so i'm sure someone else has taken it over uh but uh yeah you know a little well, bit harder to find but sorry i think it'd be good if you could build a crystal set just like that one we saw down in dayton a couple of years ago uh, you know what i'm talking about right i know keep talking you know, the one that had all that big woodworking, it was like this big, long, like that, and stood like on a bench type. Uh, yeah. Do you remember that? But no, I don't remember that. Was that like in the flea market? Was somebody selling it? Boneyard. It was in the boneyard. Yeah. Really? I don't remember that at all, actually. Huh. I, I probably would have bought it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, no anyway. kidding, eh? Yeah. Well, the reason why I brought up Eric. Uh, is there a test on your bench there is because I noticed your examiner dropped in there for about 15 minutes tonight. My examiner, my examiner. Gerald. Was... Remember Gerald was going to give you the test down in uh, four days in May. What? He was on the call today. Yeah. He, he dropped in there. VA2 GJ. He dropped in. He was there for about 10 minutes and then he dropped out. <sighs> totally missed that. Wow. Well, he probably found out you didn't do the test. So <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Wow. Okay, that's funny. Mm -hmm. um, miss, totally missed that. Okay. All right. All right thanks. Well, I've got his email address, so you know. Hey. Yeah. yeah I think he put a, uh, a request in to join the group. He did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ken, anything else on your bench besides your own? What's that? Anything else on your bench besides your uh, onion and your uh, DCR? Uh, no, that's it for now. <laughs> okay, well, that's a lot. Actually, yeah. I have a question. Sure. Uh, does anybody know what the radiation direction or pattern is for a, a sloping antenna? Everywhere. You mean like an end fed? It's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be down the length of the antenna. If it's, if it's a high point, down towards the low point, supposedly. So it, if it works. Is it, uh, is it directional off the slope? Yeah, that's, I think that's right. You know, if, if the end, if the, let's say you got a wire on a tower, it starts on a tower and goes down to a, a, a stake in the ground 20 feet away but it's down it's downhill then it's the direction is supposedly in the direction of the downhill okay. down the wire yeah my i have a friend lauren v3 cxt who has a sloper and a dxb and that's what he thinks i have one that exhibits absolutely no directionality at all that i can figure out but it's all over the place here so okay yeah all right thanks yeah so, Michael, what's on your bench? You're up next. Well, not much. Uh, the saga of the antenna switch continues. It's like a never-ending project. And uh, I'm still working on that. I had to look, I've had done a, a lot of work on it, but can't seem to get it to work. It worked once. Worked for quite a while on a breadboard when I tried to put it into, to set it up in, in the case with, I don't know what, I'm not quite sure what's wrong. I, but anyway, I'm working on it. I was going to say, um, I have a couple of new shelves in the shack here to provide more space, wood, woodworking stuff. 
and uh, I was going to say, I just for what it's worth, I have a Dell laptop that I just got last year and put Windows 11 on it. And my brother Peter in Toronto has a has a laptop, and he was able to get a. It came with a power management function so that it would, when you plug it in to you know, 120 volts, it would not allow the battery voltage to go below, let's say, 30 30 percent or 50, let's say, or above 70. So that's one way to protect your battery. And um, so I've got, I, I, I bought this Dell and it, they didn't, they, the store I got it from didn't know about that software, but I found it on the web and it works. So I've got it set uh, to the lower levels 50% and the upper levels like 80% or 70% or something. And it just holds it within, within those levels as long as it's plugged in. So I don't have to worry about running my batteries dead or overcharging them now. So I'm going to do that when I have to buy another laptop to get it to Windows 7, Windows 11, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to uh, look for one that has that software capability. Anyway, that's about it. Nothing else? And okay. In other words, I haven't done anything. <laughs> There's still lots of time. Okay. Hey, Simon, <laughs> do you have anything on your bench these last past several months of interest? You speaking me? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. No, I'm still a working slob, so all my projects are work related. Oh, Those the uh, automation functions. Mm -hmm. You're so gonna have I, to. Find, you're gonna have to go to a four day work week like uh, Kevin's doing. Yeah. Well, every time I look in the mirror and tell the guy I'm quitting, he says, "No way." <laughs> Good. Speaking of Kevin, anything on your bench, Kevin? Well, I'm. Gonna go camping in a couple of weeks, so I'm gonna try and do some operating. So I'm just getting my stuff out and making sure everything works, and using you know some stuff I bought at Hamvention, and so we'll do some field operating and get the KX3 warmed up and make sure everything still functions on, and get to know how to use it again. <laughs> so yeah, you anyway, can, that's you and Ken should text us or let the group know when you're getting ready to operate. We can look for you. Well, uh, since I'm running on solar power, I was going to bring my bring a Raspberry Pi and set up a VNC server on it, so I can sit there and do like FT4 and or FT8 and that kind of thing on it, and then just use my tablet or cell phone to go into the Pi and do stuff. You know, just to, just in case I'm not right beside the radio when I want to do things, right? Right. right. <laughs> Eric, but, that for you. Can you explain this concept of using stuff that you buy at Hamvention? I don't quite understand. <laughs> How does Eric's that breaking, work? Eric's breaking. Uh, maybe you could do a, 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 an, a, 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 you know, a segment on it, future meeting. I'd be very interested. <laughs> I think I think it might be lost on some of the participants in this call. <laughs> you can learn though. <laughs> I need to register for that class as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think yeah. we should have an intervention at Eric's. Uh, it's been suggested before, but this would we'll put a twist on it after the end of the intervention because we all know it won't really do any good. We'll just take his stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Kevin. Cherry, what's on your bench? Okay. So I think uh, on my bench, uh, <laughs> I have this. Uh, you know, dummy load, uh, which I'm trying to build, uh, yeah, which is not yet completed. So I just started on it. And uh, one thing I've been trying to do is uh, I got to uh, really clean up this place. Uh, my shack is, uh, you know, really inorganized now. And uh, I need to tidy up and I'm trying to uh, build a bench altogether so that I can get all my homebrew stuff going uh, pretty neatly. Uh, my room, like, you know, one, one table takes up, uh, you know, uh, office space. So that's a problem. So I need to find another bench to do stuff. So I'm trying to build one and then, you know, trying to get going with that, uh, so that I can organize stuff, put my test equipments and, you know, everything organized and, uh, neat and tidy so that I, you know, anytime I can walk over and start something, <laughs> uh, because now everything's, uh, all the tables are filled up <laughs> with stuff, which I've which I have to kind of uh, organize, uh, you know, a lot. 
Well, I think uh, you bring up a point there, uh, Cherry. I think what we should do, everybody complains about how dirty their shacks are or how yeah. dirty they are. And I think, you know what, that's a normal thing. Mine only gets cleaned up when I have a project to build and I've got to clean up and then away you go. So it's really, if you took 365 days out of the year, probably one day would be clean because you had to start the project and the mess starts all over. So I think maybe we should everybody, let's just see how messy the shacks are. Take a picture and get them ready for posting on that <laughs> Let's just see how they how bad they really are. And uh, after, after posting that picture, perhaps I need to re uh, resign from the club <laughs> because oh, no, 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 no. people will throw me out. So, no, I don't think so. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, look at Eric so far. Just what you see from there. I mean, right there, the winner, winner, chicken dinner, right? But uh, and you're gonna build a dummy load there. Now that's interesting because uh, I've been watching this one YouTube video uh, fairly regularly. And uh, this guy's got, he uses this uh, programmable dummy low, which I thought was a really cool thing. So that, like, we don't have enough projects and thoughts and ideas to do stuff. I, I started thinking, well, that might not be a bad project either. Programmable dummy low. But anyway. Okay. Thanks uh, there for that, uh, Cherry. Howard, long time no chat. How's that T41 coming along? Oh, I've been, I uh, haven't been doing very much. Oh, oh you, the way you started off there, I thought you were going to say you let the smoke out. I know, I know. It's tough in the summer yes, to uh, to do that, but um, I'm ready to test the, to bias the output transistors so it's all put together and it's just sitting there. Well, I have a blurred background, but it's right there waiting to bias them and then I can put it back, I can put it in the radio, but... Just make sure you film it because it might be interesting. What's that? Make sure you record you turning the power on because oh, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I just keep waiting for rainy days, but I've been pretty lucky so far. <laughs> yeah, you oh, should yeah. have four days in May because Al, your your buddy there, Al, was down there autographing his books and everything. Yeah, I know, I know. A I quick know. question about the T forty one, Howard. I see on there on that site they, this guy seems to be selling boards. What's these boards that he's selling for the T forty one, or is it for the T four? Like, what's the what are they all about? Sorry, what was that? Some guy is selling boards, like updated boards for the T forty one. What's yeah, that? There, there's a couple of people there. This guy, um, uh, he has a super station in the Caribbean, and um, he he's one of two or three people um, that's been involved with. Uh, making amendments to the design and he he buys stuff in bulk and prepares the boards and sort of facilitates um, sending out boards to people um, part uh, on the IO site yeah I think Jerry list, listed his name there are, are these boards approved by Al and um... no well they, they sort of collaborate together um, but he's kind of bored, gone off into his own. He's designed his own PA to be used with the radio. So he seems to be developing modification ports on, on his own and offers them to people. So it is splintered away then from the official T41 project then? No, no. Oh. It, it's just part of the group. And he's really active um, in, in developing the boards and, and building them. Okay. I bought I bought um, some of his PA board without the parts just yeah. for down the road. Okay, I think uh, Ken has a question for you. Yeah, is that the guy that has uh, a ham radio B and B somewhere in, in the Caribbean or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. His name is Schultz. Is his last name, and um, he promotes that it has its own shack. Uh, I mean, it looks like a pretty high end place. But um, you go there and you can use his shack. And he also, he's a, from Texas, and he also has a, a super station, like a big antenna farm. And he's really into contests. So he's quite active, but he has his own consulting firm. And so I guess that's where he can crank out the, he gets a pretty good deal on the components. And he's, he's nice. He passes that along to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was looking at his uh, website at that B and B, holy cow, is that ever nice? Yeah, I know. Looks pretty pricey. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, thanks, uh, Howard, for that. 
All right. Anyway, what I've what I've been playing with uh, for the last couple of weeks between, uh, you know, trying to do some yard work and uh, and things outside, given that it's summertime, uh, is I've been playing with the Raspberry Pi Zero Two W. Um, it's the same price as the old Pi Zero, um, but it's significantly more powerful, uh, and uh, I've just been you know, kind of pushing the envelope to see what sorts of things I can do with it. So I've currently got uh, WSJTX running on it, running, you know, FT8 digital modes and whatnot, um, FL suites, a whole bunch of things along those lines. And it seems to handle that quite nicely. I've also been running WinLink on it. Uh, and also uh, I've been playing with Packet WinLink on it uh, and, uh, and using... Um, uh, uh, Jason's uh, email server software, um, uh, KM4ACK, has uh, has published some some software that uh, it's typically used for emergencies. So you basically set up a web server with the Pi, and anyone who's got a cell phone or a device can uh, attach to a hotspot that the Pi provides, navigate to a web page compose emails on their own device and then uh, send them and, and, and you know an, an official ham operator will uh, verify that it conforms to standards and not, whatnot and then it gets sent by uh, by winlink uh, kind of a useful thing when comms are down and um, you know if you're um, if you're trying to provide emergency communications for someone anyone who's ever done that knows that you know, you get a piece of paper with some handwriting that's impossible to read on it, and you try and send that message across, and someone at the other end tries to interpret it and hand carry it to an individual. It's just very error-prone, particularly if you get into some medical situation where somebody's trying to write down a dosage of a, you know, complex drug name that no one's familiar with. Much better for the guy to use his own device and cut and paste the name in or whatever into it. So uh, that seems to work quite well, and the Pi as 0.2W uh, handles that kind of stuff fairly nicely. So with uh, if you got packet available around, uh, uh, simply an HT and one of these little uh, Pi Zeros the size of a stick of gum and a little bit of an interface circuit, and uh, you've got uh, kind of a very portable, very easy to set up emergency email uh, uh, configuration that's useful to use. So, so I've been playing with that and uh, playing with uh, digital modes uh, with my HF radio. And um, that's what I do on rainy days. On sunny days, I'm digging outside. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done any operating for quite, for quite some time. I started to reconfigure the new computer to do that, but that kind of ground to a halt for, from some configuration that I couldn't figure out. And it's too nice out to be sitting in the basement trying to figure out computer configurations. Okay, uh, well, that's the end of the for the roundtables. Anybody else got any comments, concerns, questions, et cetera, et cetera, before we, we go? Okay, well, thanks, everybody, for uh, joining tonight. We had up to about 13 tonight. Two dropped off, but uh, good turnout. And, uh, and don't forget, uh, our next meeting is August 7th. We won't be holding the, the, the regular meeting this month. I guess if anybody wants to join in on something, then just post it, I suppose. But anyway, so officially, we'll see everybody on August uh, on August the seventh. So with that, I guess we'll say seven three and good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, night, all. Have a good summer. Yeah, you too. <laughs>